Hey, David Bamber here, and this is my final thought number two of my ugly entrepreneurship uh, channel or vlogs, depending on, I'm not sure exactly where this, um, how I'll categorize this. So I'm um, pretty much going to talk about uh, what's going on, uh, some exciting things, uh, my thoughts and feelings about, uh, you know, the happenings and ongoings when it comes to entrepreneurship and, and of course, uh, jiu-jitsu training. Uh, you know, jiu-jitsu is my life, it's my passion. Uh, I've been doing it for almost eight years. Um, I'm a head coach at Gracie Pack right now, um, and I have a whole history of martial art experience. But anyways, so that's pretty much what uh, my final thought number two will be. And so I'm sitting here in, uh, it's um, one of the rooms you go to before you walk into our Gracie Pack's um, massage area. So we have a huge school here, 12,000 square feet, so there's a lot of rooms. Um, I choose this room to sit, it's a really comfy couch. And uh, I choose to, to, this is kind of my home away from home office. Um, the least amount of people walk through here, which is great. It's the quietest. Um, lots of times it's like either the warmest when it needs to be warm or it's the coolest when it needs to be cool for some reason. I don't know why that is. But anyways, I really like to work here. Um, usually kind of a slightly dark environment too. So that uh, kind of helps me focus. It keeps my ADHD uh, at bay a little bit um, <laughs> without taking <laughs> enormous amounts of Adderall. Uh, which I don't, but I need some. That's besides the point. I uh, had, I did the Nogi Advanced class tonight. Went pretty awesome. I got some daps from uh, some of the guys there and, and from uh, my professor, Professor Dan, who is a, a Nogi world champ, and he's just he's all around badass, uh, but super humble. I mean, I love that guy. He's he's really been a, a um, an amazing uh, new professor. Uh, especially in the world of no gi, has really helped me along. But they're giving me daps about how well, all of a sudden in front of the whole class, how well my no gi came has been coming along. So that made me feel really well, surprised. And I was like, man, thank you, because I've been trying to really go hard in no gi and, and really learn that whole other side that I've really been neglecting or, or really not neglecting, just I really wasn't focused on that. I've been a, a, a gi guy, gi jiu-jitsu guy, uh, not training barely any no gi for seven and a half years. So um, it's been uh, interesting and fun. I've actually really learned, loved, not loved, but I've really learned to enjoy no gi and the intricacies and, and the complications of that, which, you know, of course is, you know, another side of jujitsu. And, and uh, any true practitioner practices both and they try to become best at both. Um, I just wish we could get our freaking gi program built here. Um, this is primarily an MMA school and a uh, no gi school. So me coming along with my um, my passion for the gi. <laughs> Some of you that are that are in the jiu jitsu world will understand this, uh, but <laughs> you know I'm passionate about the gi, but not too many people uh, jump on it. So which is crazy because that's the roots. The roots are in the gi. Um, you know, there's twice, if not three times, more um, techniques and more fun and more variations and more ways to submit and control your opponent and uh, in the gi, the no gi. So it's crazy that people that really want to become good in, in jiu-jitsu, whether their focus is gi or no gi, have to train in the gi. Um, it just, it sometimes it blows my mind um, that people say that self-defense uh, application is better in the no gi and all these things. It's But here's the truth. The truth is I did almost all gi, I came to a primarily uh, no gi school and I did very, very well, I'll say it like that, uh, against everyone that just did no gi. And when we started the gi program, um, you know, these white, blue, purple belts, advanced belts, you know, put their gi on and, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, it was an interesting thing to see, it was like a fish out of water. They just, they, it was, it's just a different world. And I've always said this um, for a long time, and I still believe it, and I, I just think it's one of the truisms of jiu-jitsu is if you train in the gi, you're automatically good in no gi. If you train just in no gi, you're not good in gi. It, it only works one way. Um, you, there's just more to worry about in gi, and it takes longer to rank, it takes longer to get better at it, and because of those reasons, you learn the techniques more. Um, so whenever you take the gi off, I mean, you're automatically awesome. So, uh, so anyways, all in all, I'm, I'm just saying, if you really want to be a badass, either martial artist, MMA fighter, uh, jujitsu fighter, train them both. <laughs> That's that. But, uh, so that my final flaw is, um, pretty much, let's see what's going on here, man. So Mondays, 
are, we always have Monday morning meetings, and last uh, week I did a lot of filming for our new JITS uh, vlog that we will be launching out of the Kids JITS Academy. We're actually rebranding. Um, we're going to call it the JITS University, so we're really excited about that. We bought, we bought the domains. We've been gearing up to um, rebrand and to add more and to really make this more more structured. It's kind of uh, it's kind of just developed in a cover- couple of different areas, but we have to put it all under one umbrella and make it like a structured, you know, um, uh, we have steps. So if one person likes this, they can go to the next step and the next step and next step. Um, and we really just want to revolutionize the way jiu-jitsu schools teach kids and develop kids programs. But aside from that, um, we have a fully developed, uh, very practical um, black belt guide in business. Where, and that's kind of our consulting side of it. Our Jack program is what we call it, our JITS Academy um, coaching program. Um, so anyway, all that's going to be rebranded under the whole umbrella of JITS University. Um, so I have to go into ClickFunnels. I have to design a new page. Um, there's a lot of links that need to link up. And there's a lot of busy work, so I have to jump on that um, starting uh, maybe tonight. Uh, probably not. <laughs> probably tomorrow. It's kind of like busy work, so it's not – too exciting to do at night. You know, at night, I usually do some work. I do an, an hour or so of work after I get home, uh, after I'm done training and teaching at night. So that hour, 90 minutes, I usually like to do work, but nothing that's too much focus. So I usually do a lot of my editing, video content, um, or learning. Um, so uh, I've recently, last few weeks, been learning um, Final Cut Pro. I maxed out my skills at iMovie, um, and Final Cut Pro X has been awesome. I was able to uh, uh, um, get Adobe F- After Effects as well, so I don't know too much about that, but um, I'm gonna I'm thirsty to learn. So I'm really excited about uh, this new phase. You know, and I actually did uh, Instagram stories about this. It's interesting getting into the technology of when it comes to video editing and, and technology in general, but where really creativity is begins to really be your limit so technology can I mean you can create a fantastic story and edit and and all these things and and I understand even kind of from a directorial uh, standpoint the difficulties now because now when you're filming you have to think about the editing and I know if you guys are watching this you've been doing this for a long time that's probably like a duh right I get it but I'm really that's the point I'm at right now is I get it and I'm understand it now where the better creativity the better mind you have for creativity the more amazing and more um, better communicated your videos will be and whatever you're videoing and whatever your ultimate result and goal of those videos, it's a lot easier to do and it becomes more, a lot more impactful the more creative you are. So that's really interesting to, um, you know, to dive into this world and to realize that creativity uh, really has a huge, uh, has a huge weight um, on the success of, uh, of, this type of um, technology, you know, of uh, videoing and, and editing and, you know, producing content in that way. So that's pretty exciting because I've always been super creative. I've always had, you know, that side of me. Uh, you know, I went to college in the beginning at, um, under an acting uh, major. So I always had that type of creativity. I don't, never, I don't think I'm that good at writing. Um, you know, there's some, I didn't obviously take the actor route. So this is really cool too. Um, I'm starting to get really passionate about, you know, filming and editing and, and creating content that way. Uh, and I've been very thirsty to soak up as much knowledge um, as possible the last uh, five, six months. Um, definitely the last few weeks learning uh, Final Cut Pro, uh, Final Cut Pro X. And, uh, and then I, I need to, to jump on a, Adobe um, After Effects. So I'm really excited about the, uh, the ability um, they're the, the new skills that I'm, I'm adding on, uh, to my ugly entrepreneurship journey. And, uh, in case you're wondering why I call it ugly entrepreneurship, um, I should probably re- keep on referencing this for a while. It's kind of to, you know, Tony Robbins is famous in or infamous for using the language of taboo words, um, to kind of shock people and to get people's attention. Um, copywriters have been doing that for forever, right? If you're into copy, um, email marketing, things like that, any words. That, so to me, ugly entrepreneurship, it's like, ah, what's that, right? To me, that's that's kind of like calling out 
the ugly, awful side of entrepreneurship. It's a very sexy, sexy, sexy thing right now, and it's something that people, anyone can call themselves an entrepreneur, and everyone has a thousand different uh, definitions of what an entrepreneur really is. To me, I, I think about it, a side note, I think about entrepreneurship kind of similar like I do martial arts, where there's no great martial art, there's only great martial artists, right? Same thing with entrepreneurship. Awesome, call yourself an entrepreneur, that's great. That's your version of it. But how good are you really at, you know, developing your own ideas, developing a team, you know, either taking something from that didn't exist and making it exist, right? Or, or getting your hands dirty and actually creating a tangible thing that people can use that solves a need. Um, you know, there's a lot of different variations. So, there, you know, it's great for an entrepreneur, but don't just call yourself an entrepreneur and not do anything, right? It's like saying I'm a martial artist and I don't ever train or I don't have a martial art that I really care about. I mean, it's, you know what I mean? If you're an entrepreneur, man, you're, you're, to me, you're just, you're fucking nonstop thirsty. Whether you're the number two or number 50 in a business or you're a startup, that's fine. To me, you're, you can still be an entrepreneur, but those, uh, entrepreneur has the tendencies to create. To me, bottom line, you have, you have that thirst and that drive into you in, to, to be able to create and create as part of a team uh, create your own original idea or product or service, um, but to me, it really stems from you know the root is to create, and um, and that's why new side projects and new uh, teams that that become formed uh, under a new service or brand or product, um, it, it attracts those types of entrepreneurial minded people because they like to create. Um, it's also to their detriment. You know, I like to use the analogy of Superman often where Superman's greatest strength is also his greatest weakness. Same thing with entrepreneurship. Sometimes <laughs> your greatest, our greatest weakness can be starting too many side projects. Uh, my brother did a really cool anchor on, on that app uh, today and he talked about side projects and the, the challenges and difficulties and people replacing family time with a side project where that side project is really just going to suck the life out of you and really won't produce what you originally got excited about that you thought it would produce because uh, that side project, it might be amazing, but it requires 100% of your time. So you're already, you already have one thing that's making you all, all this money or this lifestyle, et cetera, you're doing something, and then a side project, something excited, or someone reaches out to you and they want you to be a part of something and gets you all excited and those, those juices start flowing and oh my God, what if, what if, what if, potential, 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 and I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, right? All that positive thinking that you, we need, you have to tell yourself that, uh, whether you believe it or not sometimes, but you have to tell yourself that and stay positive as an entrepreneur. So that all of a sudden jumps you and it gets you all excited. But here's the thing, that side project that has this potential, lots of times need to replace um, hour by hour the main thing. And that's just not feasible, right? Because then you're not doing, you're doing less of the main thing that you have already created, right? And you're, you're hopefully... You know, it's like it's like starting five different startup companies all at the same time. It's like it's near impossible because you have to jump and really commit yourself a hundred percent and your family a hundred percent or your resources a hundred percent to really make that side project into what you want it to be. Um, you know, I don't believe that you can develop anything uh, just a little bit, um, anything worth it at least, like great you can create a side you know thousand dollars a month maybe that doesn't take too much time but um you know not not the the really big you know brands or products or services you know those big exciting uh uh ideas so anyways all in all uh just be careful of of getting overly excited and then you're like, oh no, okay, I can stay up later, I can sleep less, I can, you know, replace that, my, you know, my family time, or this or that, um, and that's, that's, uh, that's the beginning of the end, my friend. Um, so anyways, just make sure that side project is worth it, and you are um, making appropriate choices. That makes me think of the ability to say no. Um, nowadays, I, I'm, not that good at it, but I've been learning to be better at saying no to new ideas and new projects and new opportunities because it, sometimes it just doesn't fit. It, you really got to think, is this fit with what I'm already doing? You know, if you're a real entrepreneur, you probably already have one or two, um, you know, big gigs that you're working on and now a new opportunity, a new side gig, side project comes up. 
Is that does that fit with the lexicon of um, of the direction you're going? You know what I mean. And I know people like to throw around sir entrepreneur, but uh, sir entrepreneurs usually already have a bunch of money and they just want to be investors or have their input, uh, make some you know some decisions, uh, but not have the ability to bring it to this level uh, and make it successful. You know. So I hope that makes sense. Anyways, so we're rebranding Kids Jits Academy into Jits University, and um, got to do some cool stuff on ClickFunnels and uh, Kajabi, our video platform, and uh, mostly I gotta I, I gotta really jump on uh, these Jits vlogs, and I gotta become a super ninja as quick as I can with those. So I got a lot of work to do. Um, other than that. Uh, I'm pumped that my brother is doing these, my brother Tyler's doing these, uh, anchors. I think that's a really interesting platform. Um, I wonder if, you know, something, that's something I could maybe try to do. Um, I don't know, it's fun to just be able to talk and not have to worry about, um, you know, lighting and how, how you look and things like that. Not that I care how I look. I just got done training. My face should be all red. And yes, this nose has been broken a long time. So, um, if you're like, why is his nose crooked? It's, well, it's broke one way. Uh, at some point, it got broke the opposite way, so now if I'm looking straight on, it curves that way. So, yes, it's just a broken nose. Um, anyway, so let's see. I'm going to head out here, and you can follow along. Boom. Drank a ton of water today. Unfortunately, barely ate anything. I ate a, a organic banana, an apple ton of water and that is about it so I'm definitely starving so I'll give you a little look at uh, my part business partners offices this is where we do a lot of the meetings and shit for kids jits so we got our huge ginormous whiteboard and look at these books that she has I mean she's awesome she's definitely a badass chick I mean, she's got that's not all of them I just wanted to show you that it's just Every time I walk in there, I'm like, oh, that's impressive. I have a lot of books similar to those, but not quite that extent. Um, anyways. And no one really watches these at this point, so uh, I could probably say confidently um, soon we will be moving out of this building. Uh, we're going to go up the street a mile. Um, brand new building and uh, brand new layout. We're actually going to – it's being built right now, but – it's going to uh, have a more franchise feel where everything has a place, a color, et cetera. So that way um, in the following year, 2019, we could probably open up a second one, maybe a third one, so on. So uh, that's the goal. So that's why everything has to kind of um, feel the same, look the same. So everyone has that same expectation um, when they walk into a Gracie pack, right? Pack, by the way, stands for parents and children, or excuse me, parents, adults, and children. Turn these lights off. Walking down these steps, and all right, this is our front desk area here, cage, those are all the different areas for our training, those are windows, for our training area, and I'm excited about Christmas, we're going to go to um, Placa, which is an hour east of Gainesville in Florida. And uh, for uh, my girlfriend's parents, that's where we usually spend Christmas. And uh, let's see. That's about it. I, um, I need some water. Drink some water. So anyways, I'm really excited about um, this editing. I'm excited about us moving. And I'm down a few pounds of fat and weight. So I'm excited about that. Um, I kind of really let myself go the last few years. Uh, I used to use an excuse of like, oh, I started my own business and it just was tough. And it's really a fucking excuse. It really is because um, working out and, and, and eating right is, is very easy. I did it my whole life. Like I was one of the first people that ever ate organic. I was one of the first, first people that talked about healthy lifestyle before any, at least my circle, my friends. You know, I was a distance runner and a martial artist and I – played soccer for 14, 15 years, you know, so I was always really healthy and, you know, I had, you know, the six pack abs and all that stuff. And I was, you know, I was very lean and ripped. Um, and then around, 
uh, four years ago. Uh, started drinking a little bit more. Um, I had a, a big blowout with a, a, a very impactful mentor. Um, started my own business, and uh, you know that was obviously <laughs> very difficult and trying, and uh, a lot of ups and downs. It was it's a roller coaster, as those of you know. And uh, cared a little bit less about what I ate, and I always had a really fast metabolism. I was in great shape. So, but man, it sneaks up on you. <laughs> it does. So last, definitely last year, I gained some unhealthy weight. So I'm just trying to kind of, um, you know, get that a little bit under control. Um, so I mean, I'm feeling a lot better. Um, uh, feeling a little leaner. So that's good. And uh, man, I'm trying to think. Final thoughts. Um, I need to pause this. I wish I could pause it. Anyways, that's it. Unless I, I might show you some clips um, that of uh, today, maybe a little sneak peek at our JITS uh, vlog. Um, so anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, time is by far our most valuable asset. So I really need, I know I need to focus more on giving more value as I figure that out uh, because I want to truly help people understand that it's, to achieve those goals and those dreams, you know, that you write down, hopefully, and those things that you really want, whether you want to become someone different, you want to look different, you want to become healthier, successful, any of that. It's, uh, it's not, <laughs> how about this? Those motivational videos help, but they can also hurt because they say a lot of hard work and extreme difficultness but they say it after they're already successful. And that always stuck out to me. They say those things and they give some stories, uh, specific stories in their speeches, in their keynotes, all that. And, and I 100% believe they went through a struggle. I think we all do. But who shows it as they're going through it before really they became millionaires? Before, Wouldn't that be awesome? That's one of the reasons I actually like Gary Vee. Now, he obviously really came on the scene when he was already successful. Even in the wine library days, he, you know, they had a very successful uh, uh, liquor store, right? But who really documents and talks about day-to-day -day, um, the mess-ups and the frustrations, the, uh, the doubts? There's a lot of doubts. And, and just the challenges and battles, and that's some, that's kind of my mission, and that's my ugly entrepreneur mission, is, uh, is to really just be as raw and, and uh, candid as I can, because it's not, <laughs> it's not all uh, the motivational videos make you crack up to be, you know? But great music, great uh, quotes, great stories, all that, and again, that's amazing. I listen to them, you know, probably once, once a day, usually. Um, someone's, uh, Tom, uh, Bill, you right now is someone I'm really, um, hot on, I guess you could say someone I, I watch a lot, but still he didn't come on the scene until he was already, you know, a co-owner, uh, of a billion dollar company <laughs> quest nutrition. So that's my mission with these vlogs, these final thoughts where I'll, where I'll take these stories and I, I want to do justice and I want to, you know, try to talk about, um, how difficult and, uh, and just the rawness. And then of course, from that, the results. So hopefully you understand how, and you have some comfort knowing that, you know, we all are idiots. We all forget stuff. We all mess up on this mission of, you know, learning how to um, personally develop and, uh, and, and do it the right way. And um, I mean, do it the right way by not stepping on other people. And, um, and just kind of really show that side of it. Uh, so I, I feel in a very unique position to be able to do that. And um, hopefully you can learn, like I was saying, what not to do, uh, what to do, maybe in uh, some solutions. Um, but mostly just relate to me. I feel like hopefully you can relate to me that either you're ha you just decided to become an entrepreneur, you're interested in it, you're trying to become it, you think you have the tendencies or you're not, you're going through it, you've had a failed business, um, or you're uh, more successful and you, you know, uh, want to, um, you know, know that other people are struggling and, and going through it because, you know, we all have these huge dreams and goals and what ifs and, 
and all these things we try to, you know, all these books we try to read and all this, uh, man, it's just so much, at least in my world, there's just so much and everyone's trying to give out their own advice. And a lot of it can be great, some of it can be shit. Um, so hopefully I can kind of be a filter um, through some of this, uh, this, this facade of um, how amazing it is to be your own boss and be an entrepreneur and oh, create a million dollar company and have a million dollar idea and all this shit. Um, and I'm not some, I'm not part of some group in Australia and, and I have a team of people that are, uh, you know, laptop cowboys that travel the globe and, you know, making a ton of money. I, I don't believe in that shit either. I think that's such a low percentage, um, of people that really do that, uh, or really are able to do that or even sustain that, you know? Um, so anyways, signing off. Cheers guys.